So today I wanted to talk about our tax system, our annual increment in car taxes system on EVs specifically. It's something that I feel undoubtedly will happen. I don't think that this upcoming fiscal year there will be any less of a subsidy there will be more of a subsidy on taxes on EVs at the moment depending on the kilowatt capacity of the motor 50 to 100 is another amount of tax and then 100 to 200 another amount of tax and 200 and above <coughs> motor capacity wise is a higher tax granted yes the taxes are very minuscule compared to that of a regular petrol car like the one in front i think the regular petrol car tax is close to 300 percent rounded off but for an ev it's just about 30 percent which is great like i feel like nepal comparatively is the only country where taxes and EV prices are priced in such a way that EV cars end up being a lot more cheaper than their gas counterparts and I'm talking about cars across the range like it's usually the other way around you buy a manual car for like the cheapest spec a base spec and then you add a couple of thousand of dollars then you get an automatic one and then you add another couple of thousand of dollars you get a hybrid powertrain car and then you add again another five to ten thousand dollars and then you finally get an ev at least that's what basically happens in markets abroad however here because of these lesser taxes i wouldn't say cuts on evs they themselves become the cheapest one to buy at the end of the day like this kona is cheaper here the ev like just look across the border i know I, i've been quoting international markets like europe and us in mind but just look across the border in india a creta here is fully specked out about 70 something if you have like an automatic and everything however if Alcona is in the mid 60s at the moment and however in India Ikona is almost twice as expensive as a Creta. Creta starts at like I think 13 14 lakh I see and go can go up to like 19 20 lakh for like the fully specced out automatic version and compared to the Nepali market because of all the tax structures we have Kona and the Creta are almost similarly priced in such a way that the Creta actually turns out to be more expensive. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to explain? However, that being said, EVs at the moment, most of the new car imports are all EVs. The demand, the inquiries at showroom these days, they are all EVs. Like. I don't know how we adopted it so quickly but everyone just wants to jump on this bandwagon and I'm not saying it's a bad thing but I'm definitely saying it's something that's caught the government's eye in the sense one they're losing a lot of revenue they would have collected had these EV purchases been regular petrol diesel vehicles so one that's the foregone revenue by the government and who, which I think is a good thing on the flip side is that there hasn't been a study published yet I'm sure there will someday but with this amount of EVs on the road in Kathmandu and in Nepal suddenly I'm sure there is a drop in the amount of fuel we import from India petrol diesel especially which I think is great for the balance of payment of this country we produce most of our own electricity during most of the seasons and I am saying most because 
in the winter we are still importing electricity from India and because of that any money that's saved from going abroad I think is great but here's the catch I'm not getting if the government keeps on subsidi uh, decreasing the subsidies and increasing the tax which I think they will do with the upcoming budget I feel like there will be a bit of an increment again on what EV prices will look like in the next fiscal year one it's really going to deter companies that sell EV because they have projections to meet like I want to be selling this many number of cars and suddenly with every year increment in prices and no stability there that's going to be a huge discouragement also a lot of people will be saving an x amount of money for a down payment or a purchase of an ev and then suddenly with another price increase that's going to be another discouragement and at the end of the day what i'm trying to pinpoint is that with all of this fluctuating variables people are naturally going to want to buy regular petrol diesel cars again which i don't know for a country that every time the foreign currency reserves gets low we suddenly lock up all the imports and everything i feel like it's just so counterintuitive i really feel and i'm going to quote some examples on this but the government and its policies are the sole catalyst in terms of whether a country will adopt ev and ev infrastructure or not and i'm thinking about countries across the range like on one hand like something that has really adopted ev culture and cars in fact the most density number of uh, teslas sold and ev cars sold in the world is in norway because the government provides a lot of subsidies to its customers like to its people who want to citizens to, who want to purchase an EV and run an EV in city areas they've also put in a lot of money in terms of developing the infrastructure and I'm not saying our country hasn't but our country hasn't done enough if it wants to support more EV growth yes we do have about 50 or so fast DC chargers put up by NEA but the thing is at the volume the EV cars are being sold that was enough for two years ago but now I feel like every time you go on the highway it's just an anxiety thing about whether you'll actually get a free spot at a charger and you can just directly plug in and start charging or you have to wait a couple of hours for your turn government that needs to come in and say this is the number of chargers you you need to put on the highway for every x number of cars sold to car companies they themselves need to put in some effort in terms of like putting in more fast dc chargers they need to then keep the subsidized rate of ev taxes and not increase it too much every now and then up and down like at one point this car because of one of our finance ministers had literally doubled in value from what I had bought and I was just like what on earth you can't just do that to the value of a car yes the nominal intrinsic face value of the car doubled but the real value of the car is pretty much the same it's still this car with four wheels at the end of the day and so I don't know what's gonna come in this upcoming fiscal year it's definitely a cash cow this trend of everyone buying an EV at the moment and I know it's something very watery that the government does want to try increasing taxes on to see how inelastic the purchase of these cars are inelastic in the sense the more i increase tax how willing are people how willing are people to still buy ev cars something very inelastic is something like petrol no matter how much the price fluctuates we will always have to buy it milk is another inelastic thing uh, even if the price really increases, we still are very much going to go to a store and buy milk. We might decrease our demand and supply of other products, but we won't decrease that of like petrol and milk. So I think in a sense the government's trying to figure out how inelastic the demand for EVs are at the moment because everyone just wants to buy EVs. But at the same time, I feel like if there's too much of like deterrent, people will ultimately stop buying them. And I don't know. 
for a country like Nepal, I feel like EVs are quite suitable. The traveling distance between cities isn't that large. Even intercity travel, like within Kathmandu, within Pokhara, EVs with their current ranges are more than enough. It's not like in America or Europe where once you're on the highway, you have to travel like four or five hundred kilometers in a turn. Here, like a drive to Pokhara is about 200, Siton is less than 200 at like 170 and so EVs I feel like are doable in that range. City daily travel inside Kathmandu, one way max can go like 15-20 kilometers, two ways maybe it'll go up to 40 and that I feel is easily doable. So let's see how this new tax budget bracket comes out and then probably come up with an updated vlog in terms of what the, my opinion and the scenario looks like. Anyway, if you liked what you heard, do give me a subscribe and I'll see you on the next vlog.